been a long time. Hi, welcome to Real People. I'm Stephanie Allensworth. My guest today is a feng shui master and an artist, a beautiful person. Please welcome Carol Heider. Thank you, Stephanie. It's great to be here. Yeah, Good I'm to happy you. to have you. Yeah, yes. thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Now, feng shui, how long have you been doing that? 32 years. I had no idea when I we was first met. 12. Oh, 12 years old? Uh, when I started, yes. Oh, 32, how awesome. 12. Just do the numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what brought you into that field? What well, was it actually, it brought me in. It really hooked me. I, I was on another path and, and very happy about that path, and I heard about it. Hmm. And so, I kind of was like, wow, I don't know, but um, I heard somebody speak on it. And I went up to her afterwards and I said, oh my God, this is amazing. Where are the books on this? There were none. Back mm. you know, in 92, there were no books. So I, I asked where, how she learned it. And she said, well, there is somebody from Taiwan uh, who's teaching it in Berkeley. Well, you know, I'm here in Minnesota. <laughs> and I, but I was so intrigued, I would fly out there. And he was a Buddhist lama and he was teaching American people about feng shui. Hmm. And I still thought this was sort of an odd, off-the-cuff thing, and, but I, I, it I was just hooked. And so, uh, as luck would have it, you know, when a door seems to close, another one opens. In this case, a door had opened, and I had to get another door closed, because I owned another business. Hmm. And as I got into feng shui, um, I had an offer to buy that business, which uh, it wasn't really in my plan. And so um, I sold it, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll give this feng shui thing a try. And here we are 32 years later. And so it's morphed, it's grown, it's been exciting to be part of that. I've written three books, so I've contributed to the growth of feng shui. And I have taught, I had a school for, oh, 25 years, I think, and trained mm. hundreds of people. So it's, it's been very fulfilling, and I have seen lives change enormously from sometimes the smallest thing. Mm. So, you know, the premise of feng shui is your space it connects to your life. And, um, <clears throat> and a lot of times people don't think that where they live matters or where mm. they work matters. It's really all about them. And it doesn't matter if there's clutter. It doesn't matter if the thing, you know, the door doesn't work. It doesn't matter because, you know, I'm really doing the work. And the thing is, is that sometimes the smallest correction or change, you know, moving something or getting rid of something they don't like, it's like a brain synapse happens. Huh. And well, you know, there's there was a lot of um, uh, suggestions years ago that if you wanted to make a change, you drive to work a different way. Right, right. Well, if you want to make a change, change your space. Uh -huh. And sometimes that's rearranging a whole living room. Sometimes that's just painting a different, you know, a wall a different color. Sometimes that's releasing something that annoys you every single day, and you go, well, my aunt gave me that, and I better <laughs> keep it. And, uh, and so it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's fascinating to see. And I've watched my own life, you know, what has changed and how things happen. So, um, and it's gotten a lot, of, a lot more credence. Mm. Um, there was, in the beginning, there was a lot of suspicion about it. Oh. Well, like it was a religion or something. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, something weird. And, um, or taboo or something. Yeah, or, and, or taboo is exactly right. And so, um, it, uh, pretty much everybody knows what it is now, mm -hmm. and um, and now and lately, a lot of my work has been in the corporate world. Really, you know, who knew mm -hmm. that would open up? But um, it's f exciting to see people be open to the whole idea of, you know, be mindful of what you have here. You know, right. really, really appreciate what your environment is saying to you, so that you can thrive. I mean, the bottom line is you want to feel good and thrive and um, sleep. Mm -hmm. And so. Right. So I know that there's a lot of connections between directions yep. and colors yep. and 
moving things, you know, certain ways, the color of your front door, where is it facing? Yeah. That, I mean, I only know the minimal of Well, well you know that, yes. I, I know that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I also had heard that it, you shouldn't have dead flowers in your house. Uh, uh, because it's okay to have like plastic flowers, but dead ones for some reason, something dead in your house is not? Well, it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead, let's, let's yeah. face it. Uh -huh. Now, having said that, um, maybe it was your wedding bouquet. Mm. Well, you're not gonna chunk that out, you know? It has meaning, there's some meaning there. But just a dried up flower, it is, mm. it is dead. And it, you know, it isn't gonna destroy your life, but if you're trying to get well, let's say, you know, maybe you have a chronic illness, dead flowers just aren't gonna s support that. Oh. Or if, um, I, and I, I even take issue with plastic flowers because nowadays, silk flowers, they're so real mm -hmm. that you almost feel like you need to water them. You know, that's, <laughs> how, that's how nice they are. That, if you don't wanna mess with real flowers all mm -hmm. the time, there are some beautiful uh, al alternatives. And um, y yeah, I, I do take issue with dead things, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a hard time in my house because I have a lot of uh, like Native American types of things, which yeah. are leathers and furs and yeah. bone and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. But that's what makes me feel good. So I, I mean, and not that I like dead things, but it's, there's some energy to it for me. That's so right. Let's go into the basics. Um, I guess let's start out with the directions, right? What, and the color connection and heart sure. connection. Well, th those are two hearty systems. And um, <clears throat> sometimes um, I, I only do the one system about colors. Sometimes mm. I do the only the one system about directions. And, and sometimes I'll overlay them. It depends on the client right. and how much invested I, I, I sense that they are. But there are definite colors for certain areas of the space. And the, color, the areas represent life issues. Like there's a money area, there's a children area, there's a career area. And so that's one way to use this, this system. And so if somebody says, um, I really, I, I just need to change my job, I, oh, that scenario will hone in on. And there's some very simple things that these areas, how they, to change these areas. Mm -hmm. One is I go in there and I look for clutter. Mm -hmm. um, and it's real easy, especially if there's a closet there and here it's a career area and it's all jammed full and you can't get the door open. You know, like, wow, there's a message that's mm -hmm. impacting career. And so, or if they say, oh, I, I really would like a relationship to improve, I'll go to that area. And, and maybe there's not clutter, but maybe there's um, a dead plant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's like, oh yeah, I forgot. I didn't realize there was dead mm -hmm. plant. Or there's something in there that they don't like. Mm. Well, we just hung that there in the bedroom. We didn't think it would matter, but yeah, I don't really like it. Well, look at that. You know, mm. like there that's always infiltrating your own kind of your own being. So we we do all of these things so or does something need to be fixed, you know, like yeah, don't don't sit in that chair because, <laughs> you know, and there that's their yeah. money area. Well, mm. you know, it's broken. Is your money mm. broken? And a lot of times I'm there because, you know, well, yeah, money is an issue or my relationship's an issue or, you know, I need a job. So um, it's very telling uh, on how people are living and how they um, set their, themselves up because, and it, and, you know, it seems preposterous that if, if the guy who wanted a new job cleans out his closet will get the new job. I know that. I know that seems like, how would that happen? Mm -hmm. It happens. It happens. You take down the artwork you hate because, you know, you just hung it because there was a nail and you had artwork. <laughs> that's not intentional. Yeah. And removing it and pla replacing it with something that's gorgeous and beautiful and makes you feel really alive, that's going to change. That's going to change the whole issue around there. So um, I know people think, oh, I just put blinders on when I walk by that old thing. I don't like it. Well, that's not how you should live. Mm. You should love your space. You should look around and just go, I'm, I just, I love, I love all this. This doesn't mean I have to love it. 
Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean your neighbors. Now, if you have a partner, the idea is they, sh they should also be on board with yeah. what you love so that you maybe compromise on something, a color or the arrangement of a room. But you should both at the end of it say, oh, this is really nice. I really mm. appreciate what's going on here. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, it's an individual. It's like your calling card. Your house is like your calling card. And with directions, that adds another overlay because everybody has a specific alignment to four of the directions, a positive alignment mm -hmm. to four of the directions. And then the other four are challenges. And it all depends on when you were born. Mm -hmm. And so you want, you know, so you have a bedroom that you love. Can you sleep in a direction with your head pointing in one of your, you know, one of, one of the positive ones? Um, that's a tricky thing, mm -hmm. especially if one partner has one set of directions and the other partner has the opposite set. So then we, there has to be a compromise. We have to look at that. That's one way you use the directions. The other way is we look at the, the space itself, when it, was, uh, when it was born, when it was built, and what direction does the front door face, because mm -hmm. that tells us another whole story. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of layers upon layers upon layers. Yeah. And typically, I sort of filter through all those before I even go to someone's house. Mm -hmm. I get information from them, their birth dates and their address, and figure out where their house is sitting and come with really relevant things, because it mm -hmm. can be overwhelming. Yeah. But it sets up a program for them. It sets up a uh, um, kind of a protocol, maybe is a better word, that says, I really, if I'm going to sleep in this room, I, I need to face this way. Or mm -hmm. if I want to study and get, go through school, I need to sit this way because that's good directions. Right. Yeah. Right. Can you give us a little more about the connection between birthdays and directions? Well, um, <clears throat> there, the, it requires a chart. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> it depends okay. on, you have to be born after the 4th of February, because that's mm -hmm. the Chinese New Year, mm -hmm. until, and then that goes until the following 4th of uh, February. And, and so we look up when you were born, oh, and then okay. according to that, there's um, directions that you align with and directions that you don't. And uh, men, uh, have different uh, affiliation with the directions and women do. So oh. uh, a, a woman can be born the same year as her partner, but they may have different directions because their genders are different. Right. So it's, it gets tricky, and I try to cull out what's relevant for them wow. so they know how to apply it. Yeah. I had no idea that it was uh, this complicated. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm learning a lot here. Thank you. You're so welcome. Uh, let's talk about estates because in my house particularly, we've had to bring other, upon estate clearing for other people, we've had to bring in things in our house that belonged to our relatives and might have been, you know, passed on from heritage to heritage yeah. or generation to generation. And we have a hard time wanting to give up any of those things. We can't get anybody else to take them. Uh, but well, here's, I, here's the question I'd ask you. Do you love that particular piece? Do you love it? Now, I realize there's a responsibility there. I mean, mm -hmm. if it's been traveling through generation after generation, obviously you're not going to kick it to the curb. But it would be uh, really important for you to say, to say to me, if I saw you know, these treasures, do you love this? Do you love this piece? It might require repostering, or it mm. might require mm. just a little n nude varnish on the top. I mean, and yeah. then you would love it. But I see people get stuck with things, and they're like, oh my god, I, I hated that thing in my grandma's house. Yeah. And then it was in my mom's house, and now I've got it, and yeah. I still hate it. <laughs> so you know, at what point do you draw the line? And that's yeah. hard. It's really yeah. hard. I understand that. But um, you, you, you don't have to have, you don't have to be, you don't have to emote over every single thing in your space. but. You want to at least really like it. Yeah, yeah. And my, I think my biggest issue is how much clutter it creates yeah, for me. Yeah, and it can create uh, clutter. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, yes. well, we got this room over here where we're just jamming everything yeah. we don't know what to do with. And then, I, and this is how I work. I like, then every now and again, I'm like, well, I got to clean that room out. So then I start putting everything back out yeah. <laughs> into the public space again. And then it's like, oh my God, I got to put that all that back. You know, it becomes just a uh, unnecessary And it's task not for serving me. you. No. It's not no. serving you at all, yeah. No, uh, and I hate clutter. 
And oh, I, yeah. <laughs> That's got to be, be hard. Yeah. And I do love some of the furniture we have, mm -hmm. but it feels like we don't have room for all of it. Yeah, sure. So. Well, it's a tough decision, and mm. you're, you know, that's a common issue I, I see mm. with people. They, um, uh, you know, kids will take their parents' stuff because they think they should, and it's not their style. Mm. It's, it's not something they love, let alone have room for. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's hard. Um, the best I can say is take some pictures of it, and let it go to somebody who would go, oh my gosh, I've been looking for something like that. Yeah. Well, so. Yeah, I wish my niece would take some of it. But yeah. <laughs> but she doesn't want to clutter her house up Yeah, either. <laughs> see, that's, that's uh, well, she's, she's on the right track. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so. yeah. Uh, let's talk about the colors then. Um, like yep. particular directions have specific colors <laughs> to them? Is that right? Um, directions do. Um, and there's also another overlay <laughs> that also brings colors into it. And so um, <clears throat> usually by the time I get to an appointment, I've decided what systems I'm going to use with them. Um, if somebody's had a lot of feng shui experience, mm -hmm. I can really take them down a, a road. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody's like kind of new to it, I keep it quite basic but very very effective and one of the ways I, I use uh, I work with a client like that is I use something called a bagua and that is not dependent on directions mm. but it is dependent on colors and so um, there are different colors for different issues so there's like um, purple for the wealth area if I'm using the bagua the wealth area is in the back left corner mm. doesn't matter which direction it's facing because I, I, mm. I don't use directions with mm -hmm. the Bagua. But in the back left corner is, uh, is a great place to have purple, to have a purple uh, orchid, if you don't really like a lot of purple, or a little amethyst. Mm. Or if you love purple, go for it. You know, yeah. paint that whole area, uh, uh, you know, an aubergine color or a purple or a lavender. Mm -hmm. um, what it does is it amplifies what it stands for. So it amplifies wealth. If you go to like, um, your career area, that color is black, and that's mm. right up in front in the middle. And a lot of times that's somebody's um, entry. Oh. And so, you know, if you've got a house with the front door right in the middle, mm -hmm. that's probably where their career area is. And so black uh, can be integrated in very subtle ways, a, a, a welcome mat or pen and ink drawings, they're black and white, mm -hmm. you know. Um, doesn't have to be painting the walls black. I haven't anybody <laughs> want to do that. But it, you know, I'll tell you one of the premises of feng shui, and it's built on this, is that your, your intention is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. What is it you want? Right. And if you say to me, I don't like purple, but I, but I painted this orange and I love it, that's mm -hmm. the most important thing, is you love it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't have to. I yeah. just want you to, you know, manipulate things around until you go here. This is perfect for me. I love this. It, there, and it doesn't mean things, you know. It, there's no right and wrong. Doesn't mean you just throw out rules. They're a guide, and mm -hmm. they can be very helpful for you. But sometimes I've run across people who say, "Yeah, I should have had red here, and I just can't do red." Well, mm -hmm. think about if you did red anyway, and then you're in. And you know, it's just like, oh, yeah. I just don't care for red, but it's good feng shui. You, feng shui is not good then. Yeah. It's just not, it's not good for you. So mm. it's a very, very personal journey. And that's what happened to feng shui when it kind of moved west out of China. Oh. Okay. Well, because the, the, the original form of it was yes or no, black or white, mm. live or die. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, there was a death position like, you know, wow, that's pretty strong. You, know, you can't sit there. And you, so it moved as it moved through Europe and then it got really here to the States and particularly uh, Professor Lin, who was my teacher out in Berkeley, he, he really understood that we're different. Mm -hmm. we're, our, our chi is different, the chi of the land is different. And so um, he learned a lot from the, those of us who sat with him, like, no, yeah, we're not doing that. And so he would find ways that could integrate. And, and he would say, the most important thing is somebody wants, needs to love their space. Mm -hmm. And so 
these are suggestions. I've seen them work in the past. But if you say, I hate red or I hate purple or I never use my front door, but I do use my back, you know, like mm -hmm. we can adjust to that. Mm -hmm. But there has to be the, the owner of the space or the occupant of the space needs to get on board. This yeah. is not my project. Right, I'm right. just giving. So yeah. when, when I work with a client, it's like they have to be engaged. They have to understand, I'm giving them ideas, which one would you like? Mm -hmm. Or how do you feel about if you moved this? Because if I see resistance, we need to dig in a little bit mm. and see what that's about. Yeah, yeah, that is fascinating. It's kind of like therapy. Yeah. I Seriously, I think there are people who did feng shui and then av didn't, not that they avoided, but they didn't feel they needed therapy. Mm. I mean, they were confused, they were kind of lost. They just think didn't think their life was worth anything. And we, we just did a revamp on their home. Wow. And it was like, you know, they could find themselves there mm -hmm. and, and make, it, make it happen for them. So therapy. Oh. Wow. <laughs> well, you have another skill as well that I'd like to go into now. Yeah. And that is painting. And is that acrylic that you're doing? Yes, it's acrylic. Oh, beautiful flowers. Will you tell us a little bit about your paintings and your upcoming show? Uh, uh, absolutely. Show? Um, <clears throat> I have always been, uh, I've always been involved in art in some fashion. And my business before feng shui was, uh, was very creative. Mm. And so, so they seem to meld pretty well together. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. That's very astute. Um, yes, they're very, they're feng shui paintings mm. because obviously I am immersed in that world. And so all the paintings have some kind of intention behind them. Now, I don't have to reveal that to people. Mm -hmm. They usually get it. Um, I do write a haiku for each of my paintings. Oh. And so some of that, sometimes that haiku will give them a clue as to what this painting's about. Sometimes it's a little bit of advice. Yeah, this, mm. you know, I, I really listen to the painting. You know, I kind of do a very, um, a very sacred thing when I start painting. And then when I'm, in, you know, walking away, I just honor it. Sometimes I'm like, this is awful. But <laughs> it's still okay. It's gone through its process, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. and I, I know I'll come back and the next day and things will start to come. So uh, most of them have turned out to be botanicals. They're big flowers. I don't know why. I, I can't paint anything else. I've tried and I paint something else and it's like, this is still a flower. It turned out to be a flower. So I'm having a, an exhibit at the Arboretum. Um, it starts uh, July 18th and it runs through August 25th. Beautiful. Yeah. And now the haiku, haiku, <laughs> haiku, when you write that, do you exhibit it with the yes. painting? Yes, yes. Okay, so the, the observers can read the haiku and then, and then kind of get well, that, I had somebody get buy that energy. That's right, and I had somebody buy one of mine based on the haiku. Oh, really? She read it and she went, oh my God, that's my painting. Yeah. And I'm like, do you like the painting? <laughs> <laughs> but the message was there for her, yes. Yeah. And it was perfect. Yeah. yeah. So they sort of, you know, it's intention again. Mm. You know, it's just that whole intention piece. And people get that on a level that you can't just describe, you know, right off the bat. But yeah. um, they, there's a lot of spirituality behind them. So how many paintings are you going to have there? And are they for sale? They're all for sale. Um, <clears throat> I would say there's about 25. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's a big, long expanse, and a lot of mine are three feet, two feet, three feet mm -hmm. wide, and you know, correspondingly high. So they're pretty big. And they come framed. Um, a couple, few of them are framed. Okay. But I paint around the edges. The oh. the canvas is mm -hmm. thick, mm -hmm. so kind of so I paint around it, and it they look framed. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, you can either just put it on the wall like that or exactly. have it framed. Or have right? it framed. People mm -hmm. can have them nice. framed. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and you also have another passion for felines. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't, have you tried painting cats? No. Well, yeah. I, yes. And it's like, no, you know what? Whatever this painting muse is, it's like, no, you're not doing cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been. The, in, the muse said no, not yeah, the felines. <laughs> not, not the felines. But yes, I've always had a passion for cats. And um, 
I was involved with a cat shelter in mm -hmm. North St. Paul for many years and uh, really had some wonderful experiences there. Um, mm -hmm. We got a big endowment and bought a building and renovated it and it was feng shui for the cats oh, and nice. um, they're doing very well there. Where is that? Uh, North St. Paul. It's called Caring for Cats. Well, the, the other one, the new one? Yep. Is North it's St. Paul as well? Yes, oh, okay. we moved just few blocks away. Oh, I thought it was mm -hmm. going to be on the south side because I think when we first met we talked about it. Yes, so you talked about it. You wanted one on the south side. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, that may still happen. It depends, mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, yeah. uh, and I loved what you were doing uh, with Caring for Cats. Mm -hmm. I came up there the, when we first met. We met at a Clothing, clothing party, thing, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I jumped right on that bandwagon because I too share your love for felines. And I was so pleased to see I donated two of my children's books, and the kids read. They have this. Pro do they still do that program? Cat Tales. Cat Tales, Cat where they read the, they read the to books the cats. to the cats. Yeah. yeah. And I was so pleased to see that while this whole thing was going on, so many cats were being adopted and yes. brought home. It yes. was just a beautiful thing. It so. is. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you for that as well. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I, it was an honor to be part of it. Oh yeah, they did good work. Yeah, mm -hmm. you you still are a part of it, or I am not. I just really stepped down. Well, you know, painting, and then mm -hmm. I'm busy with feng shui. I did step away. My tenure on the board was up, and I thought it was an opportunity for oh. me for someone else to step in. And um, but I keep track of what's going on uh -huh. there. So now yeah. you can concentrate on your painting again yes. and the feng shui. That's right. All right. That's right, and and you're still doing the corporate stuff, or are you yeah, still doing no, individual I am. residential both, as well? Both, both. Okay, because yeah. I'm like interested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think my my house could use a little help. <laughs> well, I'm happy to help you with that. And during COVID, I learned how to do them long distance. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. video calls. V video so calls. So you could yeah. just walk around and show your icky corners to people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know. I made them open doors. They were like, no. <laughs> Open the medicine cabinet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show me what you telling. Had. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Well, I want to thank you for being here with us today, oh. Carol. And would you give us your uh, contact information before sure. we close out? Well, my uh, website is Carol Heiders, and Carol has an E on the end, C-A-R-O-L-E-H-Y-D-E-R.com. Mm. E and I am on Facebook and LinkedIn, and, um, you know, I'd love to hear from yeah. people, you know, questions or any concerns. Yeah, yeah and we'll have your information on uh, the the show here as well. Okay. And so people can get, get in contact with you and mm -hmm. maybe you can help out some more people with your beautiful energy. Thank you. Thank you and thank you for being here. I'm gonna sign us out now because our okay. time is up. It goes oh, so no. fast. It did. Thanks for keeping it real with us today. We'll see you next time. Bye now. <laughs>